In this video, we're going to talk about sp3 hybridization of atomic orbitals. For sp3 hybridization, we're going to use carbon as an example here. In carbon, we have valence electrons from the 2s orbital, and we also have valence electrons in some p orbitals. So we have 1s orbital, and we have the 3p orbitals. And these are not all filled in carbon. Only two of those p orbitals would have one electron. In the hybridization process, all of these orbitals mix and combine. And what they end up doing is spitting out four sp3 hybridized orbitals. Each of these orbitals contains approximately one quarter of the s orbital and approximately three quarters of a p orbital. They kind of look like lopsided p orbitals because this one side with darker phase is a little bit bigger than the little lobe here. And they all look the same except they sit a little differently in space. When you bring them together, what you get is a tetrahedral shape, and that's shown here. So here you can see all of the sp3 orbitals, and they don't have all their little lobes drawn in. Essentially what you can see is that they will form that tetrahedral shape with that 109.5 degree angle. And I'll draw the lobes so you can see what they look like. Kind of looks something like this if you drew all the little lobes in. So here's an example of an sp3 hybridized carbon. You can see one here on the left and one here on the right. So each of those sp3 hybridized carbons, instead of using s orbitals and p orbitals, they use the sp3 hybrid orbitals to form molecular orbitals. Each of these orbitals is used to form a sigma bond. So here's one sp3 hybrid orbital combining with the one s orbital from the hydrogen there to form a sigma bond. Down here, you can see that the sp3 hybrid orbital of the left carbon is overlapping with the sp3 hybrid orbital of the right carbon to form a sigma bond. So in this example, each sp3 hybridized carbon is forming four sigma bonds. One, two, three, four. For the left carbon, one, two, three, four. For the right carbon. And a good way to identify sp3 hybridized carbons is that they will typically have four single bonds. 